Little did Clyde know that his message from last week would play right into what's going to happen this morning. <laughs> I've got your notes, so I'm just going to give it over again. Oh, no. <laughs> Always. I tell people, and, and people think I'm joking, but I tell people all the time that I can't talk in front of people. Um, it's, it's kind of partly true. I do, I'm, I'm always nervous standing up here in front of you people, in front of anybody that I talk to. Um, it may not look like it, it may not appear that way, but trust me. It's, it's nerve-wracking to stand up here and to do this kind of stuff. To, to, to claim to speak for God and to do the things that God has called us to do is not always an easy thing to do. And this morning, Heather read 1 John chapter 1, verses 5-10 through 10 for you. And I want to know how many of you lifelong Lutherans thought that part of that sounded a little bit familiar. I got one, two, three, right? She said, if we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Right? How many of you just started saying that right along with me? Where does it come from? It comes out of worship. It comes right out of, um, it's an old LBW setting, and it's confession and forgiveness. Right? How many of you, when you've been saying that all of your lives, knew that it actually came out of the Bible? One, two, a couple of us, maybe. Right? But we don't, we don't always know that. We don't understand that these words that we say come from, from places from long ago and that we're using these words of Scripture every, every week in and out of worship. You're saying Scripture over and over again and it's becoming part of you. you. Most of us can say these verses without even thinking about it. But what does that have to do with love and forgiveness and prayer and with the light of the world coming in and you having that eternal light shining in and through you? Well, here's the thing with this reading from 1 John this morning. If we say we have no sin, we deceive who? Ourselves. So the per- first person that we have to deceive in anything is ourselves. And how is it that it's so easy for us to deceive ourselves, right? How many of us have ever been asked any day, how's it going? May I remind you, you're in church. <laughs> right, every last one of us. And how many of you, I remind you again, you're in church, have answered that question honestly? Every time you've been asked that question. People ask you, how's it going? And you say, okay. Right? When it's not. Right? Here's... here's Here's the thing. You might want to sit down. Oh, wait. You're all already sitting down. Okay. I have something to confess to you. No, I'm not looking for another call. And Clyde is not going to become your pastor. (laughs) (laughs) Although I hear he did a great job. So, Um, My life is not perfect. I am not perfect. I know I have three people up here in the, in the second few completely, completely shocked. <laughs> I do things wrong all the time. Write it down. I said it. Yes. Right? And my life is not perfect. Because nobody's life is perfect. Nobody has it all together. Nobody does everything right all the time. It never happens. Why? Because we're all... I have to check my hands to see which one is which. We're all sinners. We all fall short of what God has called us to do. And every last one of us does things for our own self-preservation. We do things thinking about what we want rather than what other people want and or need. We put ourselves before everybody else. And we say that things are fine. And that life is just hunky-dory and that there's absolutely no problems whatsoever. And first John comes up and says, oh really? There's nothing wrong in your life. Everything's just peachy keen and you have no problems whatsoever. And when we do that, what does first John say? It says we make God a liar. And that his word or his truth is not in us. Right? We should be able to say, at least to this group of people, 
whether you know them or not, if they ask you, how's it going, you should be able to say, well, you know, today it's not very good. Because this has happened and this has happened and this has happened. But why don't we want to do that? Because maybe if we tell other people that everything is okay, it will be okay, right? It's that great deception. If I can make it seem like it's okay, then everything's going to be okay and I won't have to worry about it. I can just sweep these things underneath the rug and everything's going to be just fine. That's not how it works. As I was listening and and reading this text, I found a um, podcast by some um, professors from Luther Seminary. And one of those professors, his name is Rolf Jacobson. He spoke about a study that Luther Seminary did a while back in and around um, Minneapolis, where Luther Seminary is at. And in one of the suburbs he went to, to to talk to these churches about what was happening there. He said it was one of the wealthiest suburbs of the city, and, and it also had the highest foreclosure rate over the past two years of the state of Minnesota. And one of the pastors said... And this is a direct quote from the, from the podcast. We've learned that they don't tell their kids about it until they lose the house and they have to move out. They go on living a fiction because they don't know how to say everything is not okay in my life. Now, as I say that here this morning, there's probably somebody sitting in this room that's in that exact same spot that hasn't told anybody else about it because they don't want to admit that everything in their life is not okay. And you know what? The world is screwed up. It's a place where sin is rampant. It's a place where people who have ideas about how things need to happen make them happen without any thoughts about anybody else. The world is completely in a state of Turning away from where God needs us to be. And everything is not okay. And it's absolutely okay to say that everything is not okay. It's absolutely okay to say, I can't do this right now. I can't do this by myself. I can't do this at all. Because my life is completely falling apart. Because every last one of us has fallen short of where God has called us to be. And the only way that we walk in the light is when we walk together and we're truthful with that community. And we're truthful with what God has called us to do. And we're truthful with with loving other people, regardless of whether we like them, regardless of whether we believe in what they believe in, regardless of whether we accept them as, as other human beings. God created them in His image, and therefore we have to love them. Right? I wasn't here last week um, to say anything about it. And I doubt that Clyde did, and I don't fault him for that at all. But what happened in Charlottesville a couple weeks ago is an abomination. And if any of us think that we're any better than any other person because of race, religion, sexuality, or anything, we need to change that mindset into what God has called us to be as His children. We're supposed to love other people regardless of whether we agree with them. We're supposed to love other people because that's what God did for us. Because each and every one of us before we became a child of God, was a sinner lost and not ready to go to be with God for all of eternity. But God still looked at us with what? Love. And He forgave us of everything that happened and accepted us as His child. And that's what He calls each and every one of us to do, is to love other people To love everybody. Now, does that mean we don't rebuke sin when we see it? No, we, we have to call people to repentance. And we have to call people to an understanding of who God is in their lives. But that doesn't mean that we don't love them. Because that's what God has called us to do. Right? Because if we do not love, and we do not confess that we are not okay, then we make God a liar. And the only way for us to walk with Jesus as the light of the world is to not allow that darkness to take over our lives. The darkness is there. It's looming. 
And it's always a part of us, right? Because we're both always saint and sinner. We both always have that darkness in us and we both always have that light contained within us. But which one is going to win? Which one is going to take the forerunning place? Which one is going to beam through our lives and show forth the love that God has given to us, right? Because if we show hatred outside of these walls, do we really follow after Jesus? If it's only within the confines of this hour that we say and profess and believe the things that we say we profess and believe here in this space, do we really believe it? And have we really allowed it to take a permanent place in our lives? God is calling us to go into the world to share His love, to allow others to help us because everything is not okay and we can't do it on our own. But that's why we have the people here in the gathered community of His body of believers because together we can move mountains because God has given us His love and has showed us the way to go and share that love with all the world. So go And pray like it all depends on prayer. And work like it all depends on work. And love until Jesus comes back to take us all finally to be with God. And allow that love to be the thing that sets us apart from those in the world that would rather see the darkness than the light.